Did you ever try to speed up your drawings, but you didn't know how? My name is Drau Sepina, and in this video I'm going to try solvent for color pencils for the first time and share my opinion about it. I have seen a lot of artists use this blending technique and I was really curious to see if it gives great results. Now let's find out if this really works. Let's have a look at the materials I am going to use. Because this video is all about me trying out this colored pencil solvent, I need of course a colored pencil solvent. After researching some good quality solvents, I chose the one from Zestit. It is a non-flammable, non-toxic, citrus fee solvent. But what does it actually do? Solvents work by breaking down the binding agent that holds the pigment together in pencil form. Dissolving the binder to any degree allows the pigment to flow together almost like paint. Before you try any solvent on a colored pencil, I recommend testing it first on a piece of scrap paper. To apply this blending tool, you need brushes. I am using all kinds of different size brushes from the dollar store. I recommend using synthetic brushes as the natural haired ones will absorb too much solvent and overflow your paper. These are very stiff, making them ideal to use in this type of blending. Because just dipping the brush into the solvent and then directly applying it on the paper will overflow it, using some paper towel to get rid of the excess solvent is recommended. When the brush is loaded with solvent, just pat it a few times on the tissue paper before applying it on the paper. This will assure the brush is ready to use and not damage the paper and pencil pigment. You need to be very careful with the paper choice. It needs to be able to hold the solvent without creating any bumps or wrinkles. I am using the Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper, which is very textured. If you are a smooth paper lover, they have as well a hot pressed version with a smooth texture. Now let's try to create a dark to light gradient. First I applied a very thick layer of colored pencil. You need to have enough pigment down to achieve a smooth blending with the solvent. It is very noticeable how the texture pops out but we will fix that in the next steps. I dipped my medium sized brush in the solvent to start applying it, followed by using the paper towel to get rid of the excess. As I said before, too much solvent can ruin your blending and damage your paper. After noticing the brush was a bit too big for this area, I chose a smaller one. I was very gentle with the brush and applied a very light and even pressure to mix the solvent with the colored pencil layer. It reminded me of working with watercolors as the pencil pigment became liquid. I did have to go back and forth to the solvent pad to pick up more liquid. The pencil pigment broke down from the first touch, it didn't require a hard pressure. After the first layer was done, I applied some more pencil pigment to darken up the area slowly lifting the pencil towards the highlight for a smooth gradient. I am using a darker shade of blue now. I noticed I had to wait a bit for the base layer to dry out before using the pencil on top. When I tried to use it on the wet pigment, the paper was being damaged and parts of it were scraping off but after it was dry, the next pencil layer was very easy to apply. I used again the small brush to apply the solvent. I was really surprised how easy the dark part is fading into the light one as I was afraid the solvent will drag the dark area into the light one. Because I was afraid the paper can handle so much solvent, I decided to add just one more color pencil layer and repeat the process but after blending this out, I could feel I can add more. To see how it works if I start from light to dark, I added some more sky blue in the light area and blended it out followed by a last layer of white pencil and solvent. Starting from light to dark was a success as well, the two areas didn't smudge into each other and the whole blending process was fun and easy to do. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, I could feel the paper can take more solvent. I used the darker shade of blue to see how this one is working. Followed by blending it out one more time. As I expected, it worked great and I was really pleased with the end result. One or two more layers could have been added for sure because this paper is very thick and I didn't see any sign of curling or shrinking. I was pleasantly surprised by how easy highlights can be added on top of dark colors because it almost felt like working with pastels. I used a white pencil and a white ink pen for this part. I did have to apply quite a bit of pressure on the white pencil and it didn't turn out completely white, as you can see it has a light blue tint in it, 
but even so, it is amazing how easy it was to add a light area. After having so much fun creating the gradient, I decided to play around a bit more with other colors. I did notice some colors react better to solvent than the other ones, but overall, they all turned out nicely. Light colors needed more solvent and the dark ones less. I think it's because the dark ones have a stronger pigment which covers the tooth of the paper faster. The zested pencil solvent has a very light turpentine-like smell, but only if you get too close to the liquid. I forgot it open for the whole process and it didn't disturb me at all, yet I recommend keeping it closed to prevent all kinds of discomforts. I chose to create a whole drawing using the solvent to see how it turns out. I will draw this poison dart frog. This frog has an amazing contrast between the yellow and black and wet skin which made me very excited to draw. While drawing this beautiful animal, let's point out some advantages and disadvantages of using a solvent. One big advantage is speeding up your drawings. By using it as a base layer, you save lots of time as burnishing can be time consuming, making it ideal for pet commissions or any other type of wildlife art. For this frog, I am mostly starting with a dark layer, then building it up towards the highlights. Another advantage is how easy can you build layers and create gradients. The pencil adheres very well on top of the solvent. In combination with a good paper, you can effortlessly create 5 or 6 layers. My favorite part is the possibility of easily adding highlights on a dark area. You can see how in some parts of the frog, I added a completely black base layer and created the highlights using a white pencil on top. To add the white skin effect, I used the white pencil and the white gel pen. Please keep in mind the white pen isn't archival, which means it will get yellow in time. If you are doing client work, use a very good quality white acrylic instead. If the artwork won't be sold, as in my case, using the white pen should be fine. These two tools really help to bring the drawing to life. Working with solvent and colored pencil, it is fun and feels like using watercolors and pencils in the same time. Like anything else, it has disadvantages as well. The chemical smell can be a problem for some people, some of us can be allergic, that's why I recommend doing a research before purchasing it. Another problem can be that you have to use paper with a lot of texture. I, as a very smooth paper lover, struggled a bit at the beginning with this watercolor paper. I am used to very fine paper and had a hard time creating nice and even edges, but as more as you build the layers, the smoother the paper it gets. You can still buy hot pressed watercolor paper, which has a finer grain, but the texture will still be visible. Another problem is waiting for the layers to dry. I was very excited to keep adding layers and details, but I always had to wait for the solvent to be absorbed by the paper for me to move to the next part. To avoid that, Try to create the base layer for bigger areas at the same time. If you don't want to wait and add a pencil layer on top of the wet paper, it won't adhere to it and ruin the texture as well. If you love drawing with lots of layers, this blending tool can give you a hard time as it will fill in the tooth of the paper with each blending session. You can still add a nice amount of layers, but it depends on everyone's preferences. It doesn't have a lot of disadvantages, I loved using it and looking forward to more artworks using this blending technique. We came to an end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you had fun and you've learned from it as well because I know I had a lot of fun using the solvent for the first time. If you'd like to see more videos, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live and give this video a big thumbs up as well as it can help me a lot. I am posting one time a week and color pencils graphite and pastel related videos. Have a nice day wherever you are and I hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Bye everybody!